I'd be going on a date with my boyfriend. Out he comes, hey, marry me. No, go away. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Luli and today I'm going to be talking about five Otome game love interests who are a bit concerning, problematic, don't get me wrong, I love them to bits, but I would avoid dating in real life because all the red flags are there. <laughs> but anyway, before I start, if you like VNs, if you like Otome games, and if you just love fangirling over 2D guys, then you've come to the right place because I upload once, sometimes twice a week, and stream regularly. So if that's something that interests you, press that subscribe and bell button and you will not regret it. But anyway, let me start. So, number one is, and this one I think everyone is expecting, so I'm just going to get it out of the way, is Yang from Piofiore. So Yang is, yeah, Piofiore is this game that's like a complete um, mafia paradise where things are going on and like the mafia warring and then you're this main character stuck in the midst of it. And Yang is from the Chinese mafia and he is crazy. <laughs> and um, basically, I think the attraction of him, and he's a bit of a marmite, some people love him, some people hate him, um, but his attraction is that he's a psycho, he's chaotic, he, he's so spontaneous in many regards, um, he keeps you on your toes because you just don't know what he's going to do, and have you seen his body? <laughs> he's super sexy, so obviously he's got it all uh, in that sense, and he, yeah, his scenes are really spicy as well, so I can see why he's really popular. He was probably my second favourite in Biofiore, um, so, you know, it's great. And, uh, yeah, his route is fun. But, would I date him in real life? Oh, hell no, because <laughs> he's the type of person that would order food or something, and then it would arrive, and it has, like, a spice that he doesn't like, and then he'd be like, bang, you're dead. <laughs> Someone might drop something and he didn't like the sound, so bang, you're dead. Um, no, realistically, he would be a cl classified as a psychopath, I would say. In an Otome game, obviously, you see his feelings kind of uh, develop towards the main character and you see the romance, and I think it's great because you see that. But truthfully, in real life, he would be a psychopath. He would not have any feelings towards anyone. In fact, I don't think he'd understand the concept of being in love because he wouldn't have those feelings. Um, and I just, yeah, it doesn't sound fun. I, you, I mean, even if you did date someone like that, you'd probably last one night and then you'd be in a grave. So <laughs> it's just, I, yeah, I would avoid. However, he is a great character. And as is the case in all Otome games, you get to experience someone like that in the safety of your room in a game. And it's great. So, you know, that I mean, that's why they're, they're fun. Two. Helvetica. So Helvetica is an interesting one. He's um, this narcissistic character in Buster Fellows, which is about a bunch of uh, guys doing illegal things, but for the sake of the good. Um, and Helvetica is a very good transformation artist, and he's very narcissistic, he's vain, he cares a lot about his uh, looks. But the reason why and okay, he is like my second favorite of all Otome games, like, you know, so it's pretty up there. Um, so he's one of my favorites. Uh, but the issue is that he is quite, I think he gets a little bit jealous of other guys interacting with Teuta, uh, which is already a little bit like worrying in real life. Um, but he also, I feel like innocently just flirts around with girls, um, and by flirting around, I mean like putting his arm around them, like doing things like that. But personally, I don't think I'd be happy as a girlfriend watching like my boyfriend do that. Um, so I think that's the issue with him because he does that innocently. He doesn't really realize he's like what he's doing is affecting Toka. And also like sometimes I there was a scene where he isn't the one carrying the bags because he can't, <laughs> what did he say? Something like, oh, but Toto, your hands don't earn as much as my hands do or something like that. And he doesn't like carry bags for her. 
I don't know. I just think in an Otome game, he is great. He is a complicated character. I adore him to bits. He's quirky. I just, you know, everything about him. He's fun. He's vain. He, yeah, as I said, I like all the traits. And I, I like seeing jealousy in Otome games. But... When it comes to like real life, I want I like being the damsel in distress. I want someone that's half more than happy to carry my bags. I want someone who doesn't get jealous over like the dumbest things. And I want someone that likes me and only me and shows that. So in that sense, I would probably avoid him. <laughs> Three, Xion. So Xion is this beautiful therapeutic character in Variable Barricade, which is about this young girl who has to find a fiance but gets given four options and they're all a complete mess. Um, Xion is the kept man and throughout his whole life pretty much he's just been, you know, being looked after by all these different rich people. And the thing is, like in the game, it seems great. And, you know, it all works out in the end and all of that. And he's pretty, he's therapeutic and all this. But let's face it, in real life, can you imagine working and then all your hard-earned money ends up going to this humanoid pet, essentially? I just... And, and you have to look after them? Like, I'm sorry, but no matter how therapeutic you are, I don't, I don't think I could deal with that, especially as I am a bit like Xion in that I am absolutely hopeless in everything I do. So I, if anything, I need being looked after. <laughs> so we would be hopeless together. Me and then another version of me, essentially, like, I mean, it just things wouldn't function and we'd probably be arguing all the time. Um, so in that sense, as much as I really like Xion, and he's probably my second favourite in Variable Barricade, unfortunately, he... yeah, no, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Xion. <laughs> Four is Tomomori from Birushana Rising Flower of Genpei. This one's pretty obvious, I think. He's a uh, red flag bonanza, much like Yang. He is like in his own category of, of trash. <laughs> and Tomori is actually my favourite character in Birushana. So, you know, clearly I love the trashy people. <laughs> but um, he basically sees the main character right at the beginning of the game and he sees his tears, uh, her tears and then he just falls in love with essentially her crying face and then he gets obsessed over it. He pops up everywhere like whenever she's fighting someone, hi Shanna and he's like there trying and then, and then he wants to like basically he pops up everywhere and wants to like make her marry him basically and you know in an Otome game, I think it's fun and almost endearing watching that obsessive attraction towards the main character. Like, it's quite... I think it's that feeling of being wanted or desired. It's great. And in an Otome game, you're not affected, but you still get to experience that. Um, so it's really fun. And he is really pretty. Like, they're all pretty, but he is pretty. <laughs> so there's that too. And I don't know. It's it's The story is fun because of how crazy he is. Um, However, in real life, I would not want someone popping out of nowhere every time I go to, you know, shop at the, like, do my groceries or something, like, someone to pop up and be like, hey, marry me. <laughs> like, no, go away, Tomori. I don't want you. But then, that's the kind of person he would be. He would be, like, this good-looking guy that just appears in random locations. I'd be going on a date with my boyfriend. Out he comes. Hey, marry me. No, go away. <laughs> like, as I said, in an atomic game, it's great. He's cute. His obsession is kind of attractive. And, you know, especially how he tries to make her cry in various ways. It's entertaining. Like, I, I really like him as an atomic game character. But would I date him in real life? No, because all the red flags are there. He's obsessive. He wants to marry you without even getting to know you. He is crazy <laughs> he, he like kills people it's not as random as yang but he is still very ruthless with everyone around him um so yeah no <laughs> now fifth but not least is gil from cupid parasite 
Now this may come as a bit of a surprise because Cupid Parasite is a comedy game and you know Gil is one of the sweetest characters and don't get me wrong I think it's kind of endearing and adorable how much he um, wants to date Lynette uh, Cupid and like wants to you know really yeah it's, it's cute seeing him try so hard and then her not getting it but that's because it's in a fictional comedic setting, right? Imagine if you're in real life and there's this person who is just constantly thinking about you, like you are his life even though you're not in his life, if you know what I mean? Like he's the type of clingy craziness that every 10 minutes would text you and if you don't reply within 30 seconds, he'll be like, oh my god, why are you not replying to me? Do you hate me now? Oh my god, are you okay? Like that's the kind of guy he would be so although in Cupid Parasite it's cute watching him like you know try his best and you're sitting there rooting for him because you know you grow a bit of an attachment to this character but in real life you know I think he'd just be a bit much and I can imagine in real life the reality is he would probably like guilt trip you because you know you know, tell me well, things are nice, but in reality, you've got more complicated emotions. So, you know, there might be jealousy there, or he might guilt trip you into doing things. And I just, yeah, there, that's another bunch of red flags. So, again, I'm sorry, Gil, I love you in the Otome world, but in real life, not so much. <laughs> but anyway, that kind of concludes my sort of list of otome game love interests who you know are a bit crazy that i adore in otome games but not so much if it wasn't real um and i just kind of wanted to say that you know you hear so many people and i have experienced this as well where someone's like how can you love this character he killed people how can you like this character he's like a stalker like as if they are real like no the whole point is that they do things like whether it be locking you up in a cage or killing you like yeah they do things but it's not real that's the whole point you see the story unfold um and it may not even be you finding whatever they do attractive or anything like that it's just more seeing why this sort of thing happens and seeing that character develop over time is an enjoying thing enjoy enjoyable things so like yeah it's it's not real at all and um so i don't know i always say it's a bit like a horror movie you wouldn't want to go to that haunted mansion and be chased around by like god knows what but you want to go and see the movie because it's not you you just get to see everything all unfold and it's exciting because you do experience it but not in real so it's like kind of like vicariously experiencing things without having to go through the danger um but anyway that is my rant um do you have any uh love interests that you thought about like dating in real and you're like oh my god actually no because i'd be interested to know but anyway as is always the case thank you very much for watching remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and hopefully i'll see you in another one of my videos or streams bye